Okay, so the next speaker is Professor Eyal Bendor from Tel Aviv University. Thank you very much for the organizer to invite me for this very interesting uh, meeting. My talk will be today, uh, I will take you to space actually, and the title of my talk is Dead Sea Rift as a Unique Site for Sensor Calibration from Orbit. I will speak about Amias Playa especially. The outline of my talk will be as follow, I will speak about what is calibration, why we need calibration, why orbital sensor need calibration, what is the vicarious calibration uh, uh, issue and solution, global library or archive of vicarious calibration sites over the world, the hyperspectral technology from space. I will speak about uh, the properties for vicarious calibration site and show that Amiaz Playa and Maktesh Ramon, southern Israel, are ideal super site for that. And then I will speak about ASI ESA. ASI is the uh, Italian Space Agency and ESA is the Israeli Space Agency joint project over Amiaz Playa to show that this uh, idea is real. And then I will speak about the new hyperspectral missions uh, that uh, uh, the leading space agencies are now uh, uh, planning and how NASA and uh, Amiaz Playa is now in a, a pipeline for calibration of hyperspectral uh, sensor in orbit. 20 minutes. Yes. How much? 20. 30. No. <laughs> okay, since, 90, 90, since 1972 when the first civilian uh, satellite was uh, launched uh, by NASA, we have many, many other satellites on orbit. And what is nice about the satellite, it is furnished by a camera, and this camera captures the uh, sun radiation that reflected from the atmosphere and from the uh, surface. But what we have in the sensor, what we have in uh, the, the, the platform is a sensor, and this sensor has to be calibrated. Why? If we are look about optical calibration, if we are not doing the zoom, the, the, sorry, the focus, then we don't uh, actually get the, the information from the camera. The same thing applies for the radar speed uh, 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 sensor. If it is not calibrated prior to the uh, operation, then court of law will not uh, actually uh, 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 get the uh, uh, or, or uh, um, get get the the uh, numbers uh, uh, in, in a. Uh, uh, Never mind, you, you understand. Anyway, the sensor, the sensor we have in orbit is a very complicated one. It has optic, it has detectors, it has uh, uh, many, many uh, moving uh, uh, parts, and this detector has uh, to be, or this sensor has to be calibrated before launch. If you are not calibrated the sensor before launch, then many sensors that sees the same thing can actually provide us different images. And this is what we de definitely don't want. So what, we, what is sensor calibration? is actually calibrated the sensor before launch and then finding the factor that could actually uh, give us the, the real, uh, um, real measurement of the sensor if he was calibrated in the ground. However, we cannot do that in space because we have lots of, uh, lots of interferences that happen in the space. We cannot bring the sensor back to Earth to calibrate it. And then we have to find a way how to do that. And for doing that, we have, uh, we have actually, uh, there is a very uh, big group uh, worldwide that they uh, call the Calval group, and they are doing uh, calibration by using the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, several sites over the world. So we need to do calibration for output for the physical uh, units, then spectral response of the, of the accurate frequency, and then repeatable thematic mapping. This is our, the three, uh, three uh, way that we do calibration of sensor from satellite. So one way is to do that on board. We can put uh, some assembly on board the satellite and calibrate the sensor. But this is cost lots of money, and this is not this is unusual and not being uh, done uh, frequently. Then we can do moon calibration, but the most important thing is vicarious calibration. And the vicarious calibration is actually refers to techniques that make use of natural or artificial sites on surface of the Earth for the post-launch calibration of the sensor and etc and etc. So you understand what is the vicarious calibration. 
What are the properties for vicarious calibration? First of all, the, the area has to be homo homogeneous and flat terrain. Then it has to be bright and gray uh, surface, uniform roughness, large area that is stable over the year, monitored by frequent ground measurement, high in altitude, and cloudless. And there is a very nice catalog uh, is by the USGA, uh, and this catalog shows us all places around the world that obey those criteria. So this is just an example about the places in the United States, and here is the place around the Middle East and Asia. And as you see, Maktesh Ramon is, one, is part of this vicarious calibration area, but this vicarious calibration area is only for thematic mapping. It's not for radiometric and not for spectral. So we need something for the spectral and radiometric calibration. Now I would like to take you to a technique, new technique in space, not in space yet, but uh, it is a new technique. The technique called hyperspectral remote sensing and the simultaneously acquisition of images in many registered spectrally high resolution continuous band of selected or all spectral domain across the UV, Vs, near, Swear, Muir, Lear uh, region. And, uh, and this is very interesting because what we can do is actually spectral analysis from space or from air domain, and we can get information about the atmosphere, lithosphere, hydrosphere, cryosphere, biosphere. As you see, we have a fingerprint of each of the spheres, and we can do much more than uh, regular remote sensing uh, uh, processes. For instance, this is the uh, multi. We have five uh, bands, and here, sorry, this is, the, this is the multi, we have five bands, and this is the super or the hyperspectral, we have a spectrum. And spectrum we can analyze and get very nice abundances of the area. For instance, this area shows us how much each minerals in, uh, 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 appear in the pixel selected by the, the, the program. And also we can distinguish between minerals, it's not only uh, abundances. So this is the, the, the main issue about hyperspectral remote sensing. Uh, calibration, actually, the radiometric calibration need to do by different, uh, different uh, intensity of light. So what we have to do is actually have a shutter uh, uh, for the sun, sun radiation. But this cannot be done, actually, by, uh, by a regular way to do that. And, and because of that, you need to find a way how to do shutter of the atmosphere radiation. To solve this solution, we uh, cam came up with an idea to put agriculture net with different densities on, on top of a very flat terrain and bright terrain. And this actually uh, was uh, uh, examined using hyperspectral remote sensing technology from Airborne. And there are four or five papers on that. And this is now a very common and typical uh, uh, pr procedure for Airborne. And in Europe, uh, there is a van that is playing uh, all over the, the continent and bringing the net to the users. Uh, this is just an example how it was in Montpellier, France, some of the ex 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 experiment of the, uh, what we call SVC, supervised vicarious calibration. So what are the criteria for vicarious calibration? Uh, supervised, homogeneous, and flat. It's the same as vicarious calibration, but it has to be in low altitude and easy to unfold the nets. And Amias Playa is the best way to do that. Why? Because Amias Playa is very bright area, is very easy to access by truck, and uh, in order to implement what we did for the airborne, we uh, choose Amias Playa as a project with ASI and ISA. And uh, this is Amias Playa, again, is, is a, is a cross-section, geology cross-section of Amias Playa. You see Amias Playa is situated 200 meters above the, uh, the uh, or 200 meters below sea level. And because of that, we have more atmosphere. This more atmosphere can provide us distinguished spectral fingerprint of the atmosphere, so we can actually accurate, measure, measure accurate the, the, the spectral uh, uh, channels and do the calibration of the spectral channels. And this is the way that we did the experiment in Amias Playa. We took a 100 by 100 meter uh, agriculture net and we unfold this on Amias Playa. This is the way how it looks like, and this is how it looks from the Sedom Mountain. And uh, also we measure, we did some measurement of this uh, uh, net uh, that uh, was folded on, unfolded on top of the uh, Amias Playa. 
And then we had many years ago, not many years ago, two years ago, we had a hyperspectral sensor in orbit. It was a, a technical demonstrator. And this, uh, this sensor called Hyperion, he passed one of the f last flight, he passed over the Amiaz Playa, and we put those net at the, the, this uh, overpass, and we did an analysis to correct the, the, the radiometric information of the satellite. It was very noisy satellite, and it was not able to get uh, the information that we were actually looking for. And this is to show you that in the same overpass, we also cover Maktesh Ramon. Maktesh Ramon is, Maktesh, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a eroded anticline with, that exposed lots of minerals in a very short distance. And this minerals has a very, very unique spectral fingerprint. And this fingerprint could be actually extracted from the calibrated um, image of the Hyperion that was very noisy. So we show that this is possible to use the hyperspectral uh, sensor in orbit and correct the, and calibrate it and correct it for the uh, uh, for, for for getting information from uh, from uh, from uh, uh, some areas that have very unique finger spectral fingerprint, but. This was from the same overpass. We wanted to see if this happened also in other overpass. So this is the overpass over Italy, and we had the same, uh, the same uh, results. The, the sensor was very nicely corrected by using the F-factor that we found using these uh, artificial nets, and the spectrum was very nicely uh, extracted from also Italy, uh, not of the same overflight. So I would like to uh, say some words before I'm ending my talk about the hyperspectral uh, mission to, uh, to orbit by uh, the leading space agencies. This is a new technology. It is very difficult to, to uh, uh, launch uh, this kind of uh, instrument and also to design this kind of instrument that will provide high signal-to-noise ratio information to, uh, to, the, uh, to Earth. But there are some some initiatives, and I would like to mention the initiative by the India, Italy, Japan, and Germany, and uh, they supposed to put uh, or to to uh, to uh, uh, launch uh, some uh, sensor very soon. Not all, all of them uh, already uh, did it. Only the Indian, uh, sorry, only the Jap Japan put a sensor on top of the. In, uh, International Space Station, and recently also the DLR, the, the German uh, Space Agency, put another sensor in the ISS, in the International Space Agency. And what is foreseen is a couple of missions. One is ESA, is the uh, the European Space Agency that will put in 2025, I guess this is the the the, uh, the idea. They will put hyperspectral sensor in orbit, and uh, also Italian will put in few days, the hyperspectral sensor in orbit, so uh, Amiaz Playa will be a very best, uh, very good, very good uh, side to calibrate this radiometrically, or at least to check if the radiometric calibration, calibration done in, in laboratory is, is, is uh, really uh, uh, correct. And also I would like to mention that NASA, some NASA, uh, rec recommended uh, priorities have been uh, just uh, announced, and they have uh, like uh, six pillars, and one of the pillars is hyperspectral remote sensing in orbit. And there are two missions in this pillar. One is the uh, S SBG. SBG is the uh, high spirit surface biology and geology. And uh, this is actually to also mount a hyperspectral sensor in orbit. And again, this is very important uh, mission to calibrate this sensor after launch. The other one is EMIT. EMIT is Earth Surface Mineral Dust Source Investigation. And in order to speed up this uh, launch, uh, this sensor will be put also in uh, the ISS. And doing so, uh, the, the, the launching and the time, uh, the planning time, and, and all other uh, uh, technical things will be speed up. And we will see this sensor in orbit in one year. So it's very, very uh, uh, challenging and, and, and very, very promising. Uh, I would like to end up with uh, two uh, of my colleagues. One is from the SBG. He visited Israel these days. Unfortunately, he couldn't attend this meeting, but he knows about the meeting. 
and uh, this is Kevin Terpia, and he says, I am particularly interested in your sensor performance uh, ex expectation and observation plans and calibration and validation strategies and resources in Israel. The other colleague is, uh, is Rob Green from NASA. He is a PI on EMIT. And he sent me a letter two, years ago, uh, two weeks ago, and the letter says, I recognize the importance of uh, calibration and validation surface sites around the globe. I am specific, specifically aware of the site in southern Israel that we hope to use for EMIT calibration and validation after it launched to be international, in International Space Station in 2021. So, you see that this is not only my uh, interest, it's the interest of a very, very nice uh, project over the globe, and especially of the leading uh, space agency to use Amias Playa and Matesh Ramon together as a calibration site. So I would like to sum up my, my talk and say that vicario calibration of orbital sensor is an important stage for satellite operation. Hyperspectral remote sensing for orbit will be the next breakthrough in terrestrial ob observation. Amias Playa is an ideal vicarious calibration site in the global perspective. And supervised vicarious calibration at Amias Playa proved to calibrate the Hyperion noisy sensor. And it will be important to maintain ground measurement in the Amias Playa for the benefit of all space agencies worldwide in the near future. So by the picture of my group that uh, helped me to unfold those uh, very heavy net, I would like to thank you all uh, for your attention. Any questions? Okay, very good, apparently everything was clear. Thank you again. And we'll switch to the...